G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in some previous videos, I reviewed this little steam engine from Banggood. I thought it was fantastic. And, you know, it, it's really well made. It runs on next to no heat at all. It's got a really unusual action. They use a solid uh, piston and solid uh, valving on it. And it's got a rocker beam on it. Now I've never made a rocker engine in my life before, sterling or steam, and I'm a real newbie on steam engines, but I've done two and they've both run fine, no problem. My own design, well, my, you know, the principles, everybody's principle, but it's my basic uh, knock-up. And I like it so much I thought, you know, I reckon I could make up something like this myself. And for the valving I would use valve stem, holding valve stem for the uh, for the piston anyway and of course it's hard to machine this because it's you know it's as hard as high speed steel so I had a couple of goes at making up valving and what I did was I bronzed some softer steel onto the end of the high, which is basically high speed steel but then <laughs> when I heated it it uh, even annealing it, it was still too hard to machine, so these were a write-off. I had to go back to the drawing board, and I managed to make up the, the piston one okay. But for the valving, I used a bit of brass I managed to salvage. Anyway, I've been working on this for a few weeks. Of course, I'm a bit handicapped at the moment. I'm having the eye operation next week, so that'll be good to get out of the way. And anyway... I finished it. Well, it's together. It still needs some adjusting. And I'm going to fire it up. I did do a quick sneak run on it, but that was only for a couple of seconds. And I thought, okay, I've got to show you this. So I'll show you the, the latest project. Yep. Okay, here it is. And it's a far cry from what I modelled it from. And you can see there's a, yeah, there's a bit of ingenuity here. So the valving is now vertical, the piston is horizontal. We've got brass piston for the valve. It's easy to machine the ports and that. And we've got valve stem for the piston, aluminium block there, trying to keep the weight down, but it's got a stainless steel bush in it. So I'm trying to keep the weight down and all the long, where it's critical like that, you know, it's got to be aluminium or something light, otherwise it'd be too much imbalance. I had to uh, make the beam offset to allow for the shorter stroke of the valving. So it's a four to one ratio on that. And once again, I lightened that. And yep, it's all ready to go. It's just built up out of odds and sods. I've still got to oil it, so I'll give it some oil and then we'll get this baby going. Okay, give it a bit of air. Which way is it going to go? Oh, now we're right. <laughs> How's that grab you? How does that grab you? Let's 
shows you what you can make out of bits and pieces. It shows you what you can do with a metal lathe if you set your mind to it. You know, no good just looking at it, guys. Give it a bit more. Whoa, is she? A bit too slow. I've got to, I won't rev it too hard. I won't rev it too hard. I've got to shim this arm because it's wobbling around. I've got to shim up all the joints so everything stays linear. But uh, she's a bit sloppy in there. But it runs. The, the actual principle works fine. I've got the air coming in vertically because I intend to have a boiler at some stage. I'll make up a boiler, run it on steam, and then the pot can go straight up and loop over and go back down into it. It's a lot easier than trying to route it around the place, so that's why it's like that at the moment. I'll show you what air pressure it's running on. It's doing the same as the as the other one I modelled it on, which runs on almost no air pressure. It runs absolutely magnificently. No vibration either. It's not bolted down. Let me give you another look. Now is that for a home brew, eh guys? You know, I crunched the numbers and I got all the strokes and the valving and everything worked out. And I couldn't be happy with that. So I did a bit of skull dagger with this, I'll show you what I did. The uh, anybody that looks close at it can see that the actual crankshaft or flywheel shaft is running in a couple of electrical component housings, so I think they put transistors in them or something like that. I had those laying around and they perfect size to take a ball race, so I took put the ball race. And this is some aluminium that I got from uh, the guy that had the workshop that I visited a little while back. I used that as the, as the mount. I mean there's no vibration, it's only bolted in on, on one side. And this is some scrap steel, and yeah, I mean, it really runs damn well. I left a bit of shaft so I can put a pulley on there, and if this all goes to plan, I'll try driving a, a little dynamo with it. Yeah, not bad. Turn up the air and try it for power. Yeah, not bad at all. It's got quite a lot of grunt. Well there you go guys, this shows you what you can do just a, with a few odds and sods and a bit of determination, a bit of planning and thought. I mean, people make up steam engines and model engines with basic equipment even. I'm lucky I've got a lathe and I'm sure most of my viewers have also got little lathes and once again, a little lathe will make this dead easy. You don't need anything big at all. 
fact, big will be a hindrance. Small is what you want for this sort of work. And yeah, it's, uh, it's turned out good. And for a home brew, you know, working on the original concept and just doing my own thing on it, I basically just articulated one of the uh, arms to get the, the stroke as short as possible. But yeah, I've left it, uh, well, as you see it, and basically for a, for a model engine, it runs pretty damn good. So get out in the shed workshop, get that uh, lathe cranked up, and get into it. Okay, I'll see you next time. Cheers.